Joining Al Jazeera is member of the Bosnian presidency, Mr. Haris Salajic. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. The transfer and the ending of the oversight of your country by the high representative is set to end next year. Do you think your country is ready to stand on its own feet, is ready for that period? Can we stand on our two feet? Well, yes, if we, uh, if we decided to give Bosnia democracy, yes. What we have now is ethnic democracy, so it's not full democracy. So you'd agree mm. then yeah. with those who say that the current setup of your country is not conducive to it gaining its full independence, full sovereignty? Even more important than that is the fact that uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina is based on a system that is based on genocide, simply. Who's to blame for that? Well, uh, we made a peace agreement, which, which we had to make in 1995, so-called the Dayton Agreement. After that, we all expected that we, should, we would move from the ethnic division uh, down by genocide and the aggression of the regime in Belgrade at the time. And we now have, as you know, uh, even the recognition that there was official recognition by the International Court of Justice that there was a genocide in Bosnia and Herzegovina. So we, shall, we should have moved forward. But you, now can't what really happened sorry to interrupt, but you can't really blame the Dayton Agreement <coughs> without <coughs> carrying and sharing some of that blame yourself, can you? Because although you initially yourself opposed the Dayton Agreement, you did accept it in the end, personally. Well, we had to accept the Dayton Agreement was not to accept or not to accept. It was, it was done at gunpoint. In order to save lives, we had to make peace. But we are now being punished because we made peace. Because the, the, this international agreement was not supposed to be the base of the future of Bosnia. It was supposed to last for some time uh, to bring uh, peace and, and stability to the region. That's all. The high representative has said Bosnian politicians themselves must carry some of the blame. Do you agree with that? Well, we, uh, politicians always have to agree that they carry some blame, yes. But what does it mean? This is an international arrangement, and it must be changed. What needs Last to be year, changed? Well, we have to change our constitution. The constitution is, uh, is not the base for the future. We have to change it. As I said, this is the direct result of genocide in Bosnia, the constitution that we have and the wish of the international community to uh, appease, if you like, both the perpetrator <coughs> and, the, and the victim at the same time. So that's why it's so contradictory, it's not workable. And we have to change that, simply. Right, let's talk a little <coughs> frankly, Mr. Selizic. When you talk about changing the Constitution, mm -hmm. what you're really getting at is the abolition of the Republika Srpska. Is that the solution? I would like, I if I had my way, I would like to abolish the system, both entities, not only Republic of Srpska, but the system in Bosnia and Herzegovina. There are two entities. We should abolish both of, both of them. If I could, I can't. But you know the Bosnian Serbs would never accept that. Well, uh, uh, if, we, if we really had the international community uh, working there uh, with some pressure, the Republic of Srpska, what you're talking about now, is the direct result of genocide. So by accepting Republika Srpska, we actually legalized genocide, and it shouldn't stand. We are all obliged, all member states of the United Nations, to work together to annul the results of genocide. And that is the whole system of the result of genocide. I want to read to you a statement that was made <coughs> only in September by the Republika Srpska Prime Minister, who said the dominant feeling among the people in the Serb Republic that they don't see the Serb Republic in Bosnia in the long run. So while you're talking about further integrating the country, isn't it true, according to what he's saying, mm -hmm. the Bosnian Serb population are thinking of going in the opposite direction? Well, they have been doing this for some time, or they're politicians. That's why they attacked Bosnia from Serbia. That's why they cleansed the population. So about one million people now is outside of Bosnia because of those politics and because of the attitude of the international community towards Bosnia. And now, uh, are you saying that, that we, should, uh, we should just let it go? 
are, are you saying, or are those, the internationals, whoever, saying that, uh, uh, you know, you can do the genocide, you can commit the genocide and get away with it and even get rewarded for that? No, but I'm asking mm. you, is it mm. possible to change it at this stage? Of course it's possible to change. Without returning to war. If it's possible to change if the internationals in Bosnia, with so much power in Bosnia, do not every day say that, oh, no, we should, uh, we should not actually change things here. You know, Republika Srpska should stay there. That's what they're saying every day. And this is the problem in Bosnia-Herzegovina, the line of least resistance. You know, let's not do anything except the cosmetic changes, of course. I'm, as you are very aware, the situation in Bosnia is related to so many other factors in the region as a whole. Are you concerned that the question of Kosovo's status will impact the future of your country? That is impacting the future of my country right now. We are talking about a part of Bosnia Herzegovina which is, which is called Republika Srpska, based on genocide. There is no doubt about it. Now, Kosovo is in a different country the country of Serbia, in order for Belgrade, the Serb politicians in Serbia, to let go Kosovo, they must have some compensation. And unfortunately, they see, and some internationals, see, see the compensation in Bosnia-Herzegovina. So you're saying you're paying the price uh, to appease I'm not saying I'm Serbia. sure, I'm sure. Let, let's talk frankly. I mean, who are you referring to as yeah. the internationals? You're talking about the US, I'm, the I'm European I'm Union? I'm, no, I'm talking frankly to you. Shall I stand up <laughs> in order to show this to you? I'm. I'm very frank. Yes, they want to appease Belgrade. Yes, they would like Kosovo to be independent. I would like Kosovo to be independent if, if that's what, what the people want there. But we should not pay the price. We, pr we paid a very heavy price, which is 200,000 dead, half of the population displaced. Should we pay some more? This is the question. Well, the uh, Prime Minister of Republic of Srpska Mr. Milorad Dodik has also threatened to call <coughs> for a referendum on the Republika Srpska's future if Kosovo is granted independence. Do you think it will come to that? It can't come to that. That's not uh, illegal and not possible. It's a, it's a threat uh, in order to help Belgrade get a better deal. That's all. Do you think the high representative should be, should be more active to reprimand people who make that kind of statement, as some say his predecessors were? Well, that would be quite uh, unusual because I, I have not seen uh, Serb politicians reprimanded for anything at all for some time now. Uh, they are protected like polar bears there. So would you say then, would you agree with those who say that the current high representative is perhaps being a little too weak? The, there is a new representative coming anyway, so there is a, a new guy coming in June. Let me put so the question. We'll see what will happen. Let me put the question this way: Do you think the office of the high representative, as a whole, should carry some of the blame for how the process has not emerged as you were talking earlier? Your expectations of where the Dayton process would go? Well, uh, I, I would say that uh, the the last high representative in Bosnia Herzegovina, Lopez Ejdan, uh, with whom I disagree on many things, but I must say. He has done a good job in Bosnia-Herzegovina, and he should have continued. And uh, th there should be, there should be uh, a more direct involvement, yes, in Bosnia-Herzegovina, that because that's not a finished job. It's an unfinished job. And I expect, it especially from the United States of America, because they invested so much in Bosnia-Herzegovina, to finish the job there. And finishing the job means Democracy in Bosnia. We do not have the democracy. So we are asking for democracy. And now, right now, come from a conference on democracy. How do we introduce democracy? You don't have to introduce democracy in Bosnia Herzegovina. We are asking for it, but they're not letting us have it. Do you feel let down by the United States? I, uh, I have uh, a feeling that they have other priorities. They have other priorities right now. And I, uh, uh, and I would like them to, to pay more attention to Bosnia-Herzegovina. Do you think that perhaps then, in light of what you said, the office of the high representative should be closed down, should be ended immediately? No. And perhaps the whole situation transferred to the European Union, with whom you are looking 
it to will have be. longer uh, future interests are, are deeper right. there. Right. It, it will be gradually transferred to the uh, European Union, but the United States of America uh, that sponsored the, uh, the, the Dayton Peace Agreement and uh, was and still is heavily involved in Bosnia, I think they should have a role too. Especially when it comes, especially when it comes to the future of Bosnia Herzegovina, and it is linked with the new constitution. We need a new constitution in Bosnia Herzegovina. We don't need any cosmetic changes in in that constitution. Would such a new constitution, which you're calling for now, include limiting the power of Bosnian Serbs to end the situation where some say they've enjoyed? an unfair veto over that the rest of the country. Th that is right, that's our main demand. Uh, I would actually want not to diminish, but uh, to enhance uh, the rights and prerogatives of all citizens of Bosnia-Herzegovina. Not ethnic groups, but citizens of Bosnia-Herzegovina. But you know what They're the Bosnian Serbs... They're entitled to real democracy. Sorry to interrupt, but you know what the Bosnian Serbs will say, listening to you mm -hmm. now. They will say that you want to dominate and undermine their presence and their rights. Well, there is only one way to know what I want, and that is to vote for a democratic constitution. That's how you test me, and I want democracy in my country. To be fair to the uh, High Representative, he mm -hmm. says that the transition, which has been delayed for so long, is basically being held up in your integration into Europe because the lack of police reform, the lack of constitutional reform, would you disagree with that analysis? No, I, I, I would say that uh, the lack of the constitutional ref reform, but real constitutional reform, not cosmetic constitutional reform per se, for the sake of it, is the main problem. So that's why I'm calling for a new constitution. Thank you very much, Harris Salizic. For the moment, we're going to take a break, and then we'll resume this talk to, with Al Jazeera.